All right. Greetings, everyone, family and friends, brothers and sisters. Once again, Shabar, Judah Israel, representing the Solid Foundation Israelite Movement, coming at you guys with another awesome late night lesson. Is it late night? Let's see. It's around nine something, so I guess it's not too late. But coming at you guys with another night lesson on Facebook Live. Um, you can check me out on YouTube. You can um, go to YouTube and type in Solid Foundation Israelite Academy. And you will see this logo, which on my shirt, you will see this logo pop up on YouTube if you just type in Solid Foundation Israelite Academy or you can just type in Shabar Israel and that's S-H-A-B-A-R I-S-R-A-E-L and you should see this logo pop up just be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you will brothers and sisters, help support the movement you can also follow me on Twitter and that is Shabar Israel it's H-A-B-A-R-I-S-R-A-E-L, Shabar Israel. You can follow me on Twitter. And last but not least, you already know where you can find me at, Facebook Live. Um, The topic of discussion on tonight basically would be what is the gospel? What is the G-O-S-P-E-L, gospel? What is the gospel? I will be explaining that, breaking that down for you brothers and sisters. So just hold on. Um... Get what's necessary. Um, you might want to get you a, a composition book to take notes. And you're going to need a Bible. All right. So you will need a King James Holy Bible for this lesson. Composition book to take notes. You will need some type of book to take notes and a pen to write with. We see Jomar Jackson. All right. Jamar Jackson. Um, appreciate you, my brother, for tuning in. Thank you for your support. Hope all is well with the fam. And um, like I said, brother, um, I really appreciate you for being part of this lesson on tonight. Please share this video with family and friends. Jamar Jackson, man. You know, high school friend of mine. We go back. So I appreciate you, my brother. And invite more to come on in so I can get started with the lesson. All right. So we'll wait to... I will wait until a couple more brothers and sisters spawn in, and then I'm taking off with the lesson. So we have Joe Mar Jackson so far, and I'll wait for maybe about two or three more to come on in. Once again, the topic of discussion, the title for this lesson is, What is the Gospel? What is the Gospel? I will break that down, and I will also go into, Who is the Gospel for? All right? Just bring out some things concerning the gospel. So I'm not going to rate around. I'm not going to rate around anymore. Um, brothers and sisters, I catch you when you come into the room. So let's go ahead and start it off. What is the gospel? All right. So let's uh, go to Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Romans chapter 10, verse 15. Get your Bibles out and let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 15. And I'm going into explaining the gospel the book of romans is in the new testament starting with chapter 10 verse 15 all right so it says uh romans 10 and 15 and how shall they preach except they be sent as it's written now when you when you come across in the bible in the new testament when you come across as it is written, be very aware of that. When you come across as it is, as it is written, why why I say be very aware when you read in the New Testament, and if you come across as it's written, because um the things that was written aforetime supposed to be for our learning, and so when you come across in the New Testament anywhere and it says as it's written. That's, let, that's letting you know that that's somewhere recorded in the Old Testament, you see. And so it's very important 
you know, when you come across as it's written in the New Testament, this is actually telling the reader that they should be fully aware of the Old Testament um, because um, um, Romans, I believe Romans, the 15th chapter, verse four, we're not going there, but roughly paraphrasing Romans 15, chapter verse four, it says uh, for whatsoever things were written aforetime was written for our learning. So what things was written aforetime? The Old Testament, the scriptures in the Old Testament, the 39 books in the Old Testament. That was written aforetime before the New Testament. So when you read in the New Testament and you come across as it's written, that means it's recorded somewhere in the Old. All right. So be very aware of that and, and be very aware of the Old Testament because you're not going to you're not going to understand the New Testament if you do not over enter and understand the old. So now I'm going back to Romans chapter 10 and verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent as is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So it says as is written. So that's letting you know that's somewhere in the Old Testament. And actually, I'm about to go there in a few minutes. So Romans 10, 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? You see, so everybody was not given the spiritual discernment of the Bible. And everybody wasn't given the spiritual intellect on how to go into this book and break things down and edify other people. That's why Romans 10 and 15 says, how shall they be, how shall they preach except they be sent? In order for you to preach the word of God, you have to be selected. You have to be elected. You have to be chosen for this work. And everybody can't do that. You see. And then it goes on to say, as is written. Now, this was recorded in Isaiah 52, verse 7. Romans 10, verse 15 says, as is written. And that was recorded in Isaiah 52, verse 7. We're about to go there in a few minutes. It says, as is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, you see, and bring glad tidings of good things. So now, what is gospel? What gospel mean? Because that's the, that's the question. What gospel means? Well, gospel, it depends on, well, really, just to make a long story short, it means good news. Like, okay, uh, to bring good news or to announce glad tidings of salvation. So when you bring forth good news and you announce glad tidings of salvation, that's what gospel means. You are proclaiming the gospel. To bring forth good news and announce glad tidings of salvation, you are certainly proclaiming the gospel. Um, To instruct, you know what I'm saying, to instruct man concerning that Concerning the things that pertain to salvation. So when you instruct man concerning things that relates to salvation, you are basically um, issuing out the gospel. You see, so let's go to that precept according to Romans 10 and 15, as it's written, when he says, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel. Now we're about to go to the original source, which is Isaiah 52 and verse 7. So let's go to Isaiah 52, verse 7 in the Old Testament, because remember, it told you in Romans 10 and 15 as is written. So let's go to Isaiah 52 and 7, because that's where it's actually written at in the Old Testament. So now we're going to Isaiah 52 and verse 7. OK, and this is what it read, guys. Isaiah 52 and verse 7. It says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bring it good tidings, that publish peace, that bring it the good tidings of good, that publish, that publish salvation, that says unto Zion, the God reigneth. So you see right there, that's Isaiah 52 verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him. That bring it good tidings. Now, that's what gospel means. Gospel means good tidings. So you won't find the word gospel in the Old Testament. You won't find the word G-O-S-P-E-L in the Old Testament. 
However, what you're going to come across in the Old Testament, you will come across good tidings. Good tidings is the same as the gospel. The Old Testament just relates the gospel to good tidings. The New Testament relates good tidings to the gospel. So when you're reading the New Testament, you'll come across G-O-S-P-E-L, gospel. But when you're reading the Old Testament, you'll come across gospel, but it won't actually say gospel in the Old Testament. It will say something like good tidings, good tidings. You see, and this is Isaiah 52, verse 7. So how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. That means bring that bringeth forth good news of salvation. You see. That publish peace and that bringeth good tidings of good. That publish salvation that saith unto Zion that God reigneth. So you can see right there according to Isaiah 52 verse 7. The gospel is only to Zion. Now who is Zion? Zion are the Israelites, the Hebrew Israelites. Who are the Hebrew Israelites today? Blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. I'm going to show you guys the 12 tribe chart. Now, wait a minute for a second. Let me show you the Hebrew Israelite chart to let you guys see who are the Israelites today. Wait a minute. Okay. See that? It says the 12 tribes of Israel. The so-called American Negroes are from the tribe of Judah. The West Indians, Jamaicans, are from the tribe of Benjamin. The so-called Haitians are from the tribe of Levi. The Dominican Republic, them are Simeonites. Panamanians, all the way down to the Guatemalans, them are Zebulonites. So-called Puerto Ricans, those are Ephraimites. The Cubans, so-called Cubans, are from the tribe of Manasseh. The Seminole Indians down in the Everglades of Florida. Is the Reuben from the tribe of Reuben? They the Reubenites. North American ending is the Gadites. Brazilians to Colombians to Eurasians, Asherites, Argentinians to Chileans, Naphtali from the tribe of Naphtali, and your so-called Mexicans today. They are the original Ishkarites. So basically, what you see on the left-hand side, you see these numbers going down to twelve. These are the 12 tribes of the, the children of Israel, and these are God's chosen people. So if you're not on this list, you're not an Israelite, and the Bible is not your book, and God is not your God. In order for you to be an Israelite, you got to fit in on this list. You got to be a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In other words, in order for you to be an Israelite, you got to be of Negro and ending in descent. If you're not a Negro and ending in descent, you're not an Israelite, and this Bible don't belong to you. You see, so let me show you guys. So who who the Bible belongs to the people that's on this sign right here, because you was you are the children of the most high God, which are the Hebrew Israelites. But the, the nations that are not children of God, let me flip over. You see right here, these are Gentile nations, all these nations that you see here, they are not the children of the most high God. And the Bible is not their book. You see, so if you are. A biological heathen or a biological Gentile, then you're not an Israelite. And the Bible is not your book. And salvation is also not for you. So in order for you to be entitled of salvation, you must be an Israelite. What you're looking at is Gentiles and heathen nations. They are not entitled to salvation. So guess what, guys? The gospel is not for these nations that you see here. The good news you see, glad tidings of salvation, the good news is not for these nations that you see here. So who is the good news for? The Israelites. Let me show you once again. So when you're talking about the gospel, the gospel is only for the 12 tribes of Israel, the elect of the nation of Israel. So the gospel, the gospel is not for everyone. The gospel is not for everyone. Because I know. A lot of us been taught that coming up in the church systems, they would say the gospel is for all nations. The gospel is not for everyone. And we already showed you that in Isaiah 52, verse 7. It says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publish peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that said unto Zion, see, 
thy God reigneth. So the gospel is for Zion, man, which are the Israelites. All right. Um, you can also look at Isaiah 52 verse six, and it says, therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know. And that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. So like I said, and then you read down to Isaiah 52 and seven, and it tells you that the good tidings, which is the gospel, the good news of salvation, it's, 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 it's into Zion. You see, so the gospel is not for everybody. Now we're going to flip over to Isaiah um, 61 because I want to cover that. Isaiah 61. So let's go to that. Isaiah 61 verse 1. Isaiah 61 verse 1 in the Old Testament. It says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord had anointed me to preach good tidings. What is good tidings? The gospel. And to the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So Isaiah said that the spirit of the Lord was upon him and, 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 and the most High God anointing him to preach good tidings, basically to preach the gospel, to preach glad tidings of salvation to the Israelites. And so, you know. The good tidings is into the meat. The gospel is for the meek. The gospel is for the brokenhearted. You see, the gospel is for the ones that are captives. The one, the gospel is for the the ones that's uh in prison. You see, so Isaiah sixty one verse one, it says that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This is what Isaiah said because he said the Lord anointed me. Basically, he elected me. He chose me. To preach good tidings, to preach the gospel to the meek, you see, and the brokenhearted. Who is who is the mo who who is the most brokenhearted people on the face of this earth, man? Who don't have rights of equality? You know what I'm saying? Who constantly, um, who constantly fighting for justice and peace each and every day? The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You see, we are the brokenhearted. You know, because, you know, it's in white America, you already know what it is. And it says to proclaim liberty to the captives. What it means to proclaim liberty to the captives. We are the children of the slave trade. You know, the blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans. We are the children of bondage, man. We are in the house of bondage. You see, America, America was built off slave labor. You see. America was built off the backs of blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. The Europeans, they they prospered from the blood, sweat, and tears of the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You know, at the same time, why they subdued us and made us slaves. You see, and we're still, we, to this day, we are, we are still corporate slaves. So, the to proclaim liberty to the captives, man. You know, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, because the blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native American, the blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans' minds is closed. Man, we in the prison state of mind. We don't know who we are. We don't know our God. You know, you know what I'm saying. We we just we tore up from the flow up. So we are the prison. We are in prison, man. We are in that prison state of mind. The gospel is for the Israelites, man. You see, Jamar Jackson says, so all this, so all this, he saved us. Jamar Jackson says, so all this, he saved us all is not true. Only the Israelites can be saved. Exactly. Jamar Jackson. Only the Israelites can be saved. Only the Israelites is entitled to deliverance and salvation. No other nation. And I'm going to show you in the Bible. You see, I'm going to show you. And so with the Israelites only being the ones that can be saved, they are the only ones that is that's entitled to the gospel. You get what I'm saying? Um, Isaiah 61 and 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord in the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. You see, 
So the gospel is to comfort all that mourn, all that weep, all that wail, all that cry. That's what the gospel is for. The gospel is to comfort those who mourn. Now, I'm going to give you a precept of this. So if the gospel is to comfort all those who mourn, if the gospel is to comfort all those who mourn, let's see who are the ones in mourning. So let's hold Isaiah 61 and 2 and let's go to Jeremiah 14 and 2 and see who is mourning. So we're going to go to Jeremiah 14 and 2. We see Paris Valentino is watching. Appreciate your time. We're glad to have you on tonight. Please share this video with family and friends, Paris. Now, let's see who mourn. Because Isaiah 61 verse 2 says, the gospel is to comfort those who mourn. So let's go to Jeremiah 14 and 2 and see who, who is in mourning. Jeremiah 14 and 2, it says, Judah mourneth. This is Jeremiah 14 and 2. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are blackened to the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. You see? So it says, Judah mourneth. Who are in mourning? Judah. Why are the Jews in mourning? Jeremiah 14 says, Judah mourneth. Jeremiah 14 verse 2. Now, why in the hell are the Jews still crying out to this day? Well, Judah mourning because, you know, we don't we don't have rights of equality still to this day. It never been amended in the Constitution, but blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans are still considered three fifths of a human to this day. We are still looked at as subhuman. It just never got amended in the Constitution. We would never have equal rights because America was not formulated for blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. America was formulated to be an extension of Europe. And what they did, they used blacks, Hispanics, and Native Amer Americans as for slave labor. So we are the true burden bearers to the real citizens of this nation. You see, so when Thomas Jefferson signed the Declaration of Independence and stated that all men were created equal, he was not talking about blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans, because if that was true, the Declaration of Independence supposedly, allegedly, was signed during the year 1772. So if that's the case, if Thomas Jefferson was right on all men being created equal, then why in the hell they didn't release the slaves at that moment? Because remember when... um. Remember when um, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation of Proclamation in 1865? Then why in the hell did it take a hundred more years for black people to be free if what Jefferson stated was true? Because Jefferson stated that all men are created equal. So if we was all created equal during the Declaration of Independence when it was signed, why in the hell they didn't release the slaves at that moment? You see? Why in the hell did they not release the slaves at that moment, if all man was created equal, why in the hell did it take a hundred more years before Abraham Lincoln come along and emancipate the slaves? You see, so we was never treated. We was never treated equally. We would never be. See, the European people, the sovereign people, they don't consider us. They don't consider us equal to them. So in Jeremiah 14, 2, in the Bible, when you read Jeremiah 14, 2, it says Judah mourning. And the gates thereof language. The reason why the Jews are mourning because we've been mourning. That's why that's why you have such thing as civil right movement. You know, why in the hell did they form a civil right movement? Because we was fighting for rights of equality. You, it, you, then you had the NAACP, the National Association Advancement for Color People. And then you had um you had the uh United Negro College Fund. You see, and then you had the Brown Berets dealing with the Puerto Rican. You had that revolutional movement. The Brown Berets, and then with the Native Americans, you had the the uh, American Indian Movement. And then, you know, the uh, Black Panther Party. You know, you just, you had all these revolutional movements dealing with blacks and Hispanics because we was fighting for rights of equality. We was trying to basically, we was trying to claim what was ours. 
You shouldn't even have to fight for your rights. I always stated I don't want any rights if I have to fight for them. So we shouldn't even have to fight for rights. Let alone we shouldn't even have to start some type of revolutionary movement to state our claim. That just lets you see that blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans we are not considered equal in this corporation. We're not. We're not. We are not considered equal in corporate America, and that's why Jeremiah fourteen two says the Jews are mourning. The reason why the Jews are mourning because they know that they are despitefully being misused and exploited. Man, a white man can just kill a black man up, or kill a kill a black woman, and get off scot free. A white man can just him up a Native American or a Hispanic, murder a Native American, murder an Hispanic, and get off scot free. That's why the hell the Jews are mourning. So Jeremiah fourteen says, Jeremiah fourteen two in the Bible. It says, Judah mourn it. We mourn for better rights. Like I said, dealing with civil rights, dealing with equality, lack of jobs. We are being oppressed. We are highly hated here, and etc. You name it. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans have always been looked at as subhuman or three fifths of a human. In other words, we've been always looked at as shit in the eyes of the white man. And that's why the Jews are mourning. That's why Jeremiah 14 2 says, Judah mourning. Okay? So if Judah mourning, let's see who is Judah. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. If if the Jews, if Judah mourning, let's see who Judah. Watch this. Judah. Jeremiah 14, 2 says Judah morning. Now, who is Judah? The American Negroes, the so-called American Negroes, because we are the true Jews. The Bible speaks of. Not only not only are the American Negroes are the Jews, but you got the Benjamites. You know, you got the West Indian Negroes, which are the Jamaicans from the tribe of Benjamin. And then you have the Haitians. From the tribe of Levi. So Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. These three primary tribes here. These are what you would call the Jews. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi are the Jews. Jew is just short for Judah. If you want to say Judah short, you would say Jew. So that's where the word Jew comes from. It comes from Judah. If you want to say Judah for short, you would just say Jew. That's where the word Jew comes from. Like the modern day word J-E-W, Jew. It comes from Judah. Because they are the Jews. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi are the southern kingdom of Israel. And they are the Jews. The rest of the tribes, they are Israelites. Because we all from the same nation. It's just all the 12 tribes of Israel. All the 12 tribes are not Jews. You see. All the 12 tribes are not Jews. Out of all the 12 tribes of Israel, the only ones that Jews is Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, the southern kingdom. The rest of the tribes, they are Israelites. We're all Israelites, but it's just all the 12 tribes are not Jews. You see. So in Jeremiah 14, 2, when it says Judah mourning, that means the blacks, the so-called Negroes, West Indians, Haitians, we mourn for equal rights. You know what I'm saying? And white America. You get what I'm saying? But anyways, um, we see Prince Shahid is watching. Um, Maurice Hodge have joined in. We thank you guys. Um, continuing on with the lesson. So let's go back in Isaiah 52. No, 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 no. Isaiah 61. I believe that's where I picked off. That's where I stopped at. Isaiah 61 verse 1. Isaiah 61 verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings. Good tidings means the gospel. That's what that's what good tidings mean. Good news of salvation. He has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Isaiah 61 verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. That's what the gospel is supposed to do. The gospel comforts those who mourn. Who are mourning? Jeremiah 14, 2 tells you who are mourning. It says Judah. To comfort those who mourn. 
Isaiah 61 verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them the beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So you can see right there, Isaiah 61, starting from verse 1 and ending on verse 3. If you read Isaiah 61 and you start from verse 1 and stop on verse 3, it specifically tells you who the gospel is for. The gospel is for the Israelites, the children of Israel. But the church system, the church will have you to believe that the gospel is for everyone. You see, the church got us thinking that the gospel is for everyone. So they, the church will tell you it don't matter. The church will tell you it don't matter. The church will tell you the gospel, the gospel is for everyone, but it's not. The gospel is not for everyone. The gospel is only for the Israelites. Who are the Israelites today? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So if you're not a biological, if you're not a biological blood Israelite, if you're not a biological blood descendant of Israel, the gospel is not for you, man. You see, but they say that that's what the church system say. They say the gospel is for everyone. I just showed you in the Bible that the gospel is only for the Israelites, and I'm going to further the I'm going to further the information. So you can see clearly before the end of this video, we also see Patricia Toombs is watching. Thank you, my sister, for, for uh, tuning in, sacrificing your time to be part of this wonderful lesson. Prince Shaheed says, because he doesn't want us to know the truth. That's exactly right, my man. Prince Shaheed says, this is why the devil keep us from among social equality. Exactly. You see? Now, I just stated that the gospel is not for everybody. The gospel is not for everybody. That's why I wanted to cover Isaiah 61 before I go back into the New Testament. Because I wanted to cover this to show you guys clearly. Isaiah 61 and verse 3. If you have your Bibles. Isaiah 61 and verse 3. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in the Zion. The gospel is for those who mourn in Zion. The gospel is for Zion. Who is Zion? Israel. Who is Israel? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So the gospel is for you. Now, remember when Isaiah stated in Isaiah 61 verse 1? Remember when Isaiah stated the spirit of the Lord God is upon me? Well, guess what? Christ said the same thing. Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, he said the exact same thing that Isaiah said. So let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. So now we're going to the New Testament. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. So let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18 in the New Testament. And he's going to say the same thing. Christ saying the same thing Isaiah said back in Luke. I meant back in Isaiah 61, verse 1. Let's go to Luke 4, 18. And Christ saying the same thing. Watch this. The gospel of Luke chapter 4, verse 18. It says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel. You see, Isaiah said the same thing in Isaiah 61 verse 1. But the only difference is Isaiah and Isaiah 61 verse 1, Isaiah didn't say gospel. You see, in Isaiah 61 verse 1, Isaiah stated good tidings. See, in Isaiah 61 verse 1, Isaiah said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings. Christ in Luke 4 and 18 says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel. You see, Isaiah just said good tidings. Christ said gospel because gospel is good tidings. Good tidings, gospel, gospel, good tidings. They all the same. Gospel just means good news of salvation. So Christ said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel. Good tidings of salvation to the poor. Now, who are the poor? Who are the poor? Is the white man the poor? Is the Europeans the poor? What about the Chinese and Japanese? What about the East Indians and Arabs? What about the Africans? You see? Is, the, is, they, is they at the bottom of the mountain? Think about that. Who are considered the minority? Who they say who they say are the minority today? Who are considered 
as the minority, as the minority, who are considered third class, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are considered as the minority today. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are considered the minority today. So we are the poor, the Bible speaks of. We are the poor, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the Israelites. That's why Christ said, God have anointed me to preach the gospel, not to the rich. Christ said, I wasn't sent to preach the gospel to rich people. I wasn't sent to preach the gospel to wealthy people. This is what the Messiah said. I wasn't sent to preach the gospel to the wealthy, to the ones with luxurious things, to the ones that's living the life, to the ones that's living it up. You see, to the ones that have their 40 acres in a, in a mule. Christ said, I wasn't sent to those people. Christ said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Who are the poor? The Israelites, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Who are the brokenhearted? Who are crying out for equal rights? Who are, who are tired of being mistreated and despitefully misused? Who are tired of white supremacy? You see? Who are tired of no justice and no peace being served in America? That's us. That's blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We're the one that's protesting and crying out for justice and for peace and rights of equality. We're crying out day by day, day in, day out, night in, night out. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are the brokenhearted. The gospel is for the Israelites. We are the poor one. We are the brokenhearted. Christ also says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives. Now, who, who became slaves under the white man? Christ said he was, he was sent to preach deliverance to the captives. Who was brought as slaves in the early 1500s to America? Exact, to be exact, 1555. Who was brought on cargo ships to the shores of Jamestown, Virginia? Who brought slaves on boat to the shores of America? Who took Native American Indians, which are the Gadites, as slaves back to Spain? Who benefited from slave labor? Who worked the hell out of blacks and Spanish and Native Americans? Who built their government on the top of the Native Americans empire? Because we know that America, this land was inhabited by the Native Americans. Who confiscated the land and built their damn government on the top of it? You guessed it. European colonial powers did. In other words, the sovereign people, the white people. So Christ wasn't sent to preach no gospel to the ones that despitefully mistreat and misuse others and exploit others in riches and gaining finance. He didn't come for those. He came to preach deliverance to the captives. And when you examine history, you can see that blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans are the number one captives of the Europeans. So it seems like the Bible is saying that Christ, he was sent to preach deliverance to captives, to the slaves. And the recovering of the sight to the blind. And to set at liberty to them that abused. Who abused us? Who shackled us down? Who put us in shackles and chains? Who flogged us day in, day out? Who raped our woman? Who distorted our history? Who gave us a, 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 a religion? Who ravished and castrated our men? Who sold our sons and daughters on the auction blocks? Who sold us? Who breeded us? As, 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 as looked at us as animals and Chattel slavery we had chattel slavery we had to undergo. Who did that to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? I shouldn't even have to say it, y'all. 
So the gospel, the gospel is to comfort those who mourn. So the gospel is not the gospel is not for everybody. And 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 Christ, when Christ walked the earth, he preached the gospel to his people. He didn't preach the gospel to everyone, like the Christian church would tell you. He didn't preach the gospel to every nation on the earth like the Christian church would tell you because the Christian church got you believing that Christ went around preaching the gospel to all nations. The Bible never said that. And, and let me state my claim to back up what I'm saying. Let me show you something. Matthew 15, 24. Let's go into Matthew 15, 24 and see who was Christ sent to. This is Matthew 15, 24 in the gospel. So if you got a Bible, you can look at this in your own Bible. Because the Christian church is telling you something else. They're not telling you the truth. Matthew 15, 24. Let's see who Christ was sent to. Matthew 15, 24 in the New Testament. But he answered and said, I'm not sent but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. These are the words of the Messiah. These are the words of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, who they call Jesus Christ. He said, I am not sent, but into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The only nation that he was sent to, to bring forth deliverance and salvation to preach the, and to preach the gospel to is the Israelites. And if you're not an Israelite, guess what? Christ wasn't preaching no gospel to you. You see? Now, to state my claim further, Let's go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. It says, These twelve, Christ, the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, Jesus, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. I don't want you preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. I don't want you talking about deliverance and salvation to the Gentiles. I don't want you dealing with the Gentiles, period. That's what Christ told his 12 disciples. Don't deal with no damn Gentiles. He says, and don't even go into the city of the Samaritans because those was Africans. You see? He says, enter ye not. But let's see what the Messiah told his 12 disciples. Who did he tell his 12 disciples to go to? Matthew chapter 10, verse 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Christ literally tells you in the, in the gospels that he was only sent to his people. He was only sent to the Israelites. So how in the hell you get out of this? He was sent to all nations. That's why I'm telling you, Christianity is a bunch of bullshit, man. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't give a damn who get mad. If you get mad, you get mad because I tell you truth. If you hate me, you hate me because I tell you truth. If you dislike me or reject me, you dislike me or reject me because I present to you truth. See, you would love me if I told you lies. But most people don't like me because I speak truth. And most people don't like me as well because what I say, I can back up with scripture. I can, I can show you directly in the Bible what I'm talking about. People get in their feelings and start saying, oh, Jesus died for all of us. Jesus came to preach the gospel to all. Jesus came to deliver all. Jesus came to save all. That's a goddamn lie. No, he did not. And if he did come for all, Show me one book, chapter, and verse where Jesus Christ came to die for all nations. Show me one book, chapter, and verse in the Bible. Because I'm going to show you throughout the whole entire Bible that when Christ came, he only preached the gospel to his people. He only preached the gospel to the Hebrew Israelites. If you was not a Hebrew Israelite, you was not having the gospel preached to you. And that's facts. If you think I'm wrong, text the scripture to me. Prove me wrong. I'm here all night. I can wait all night for anyone that want to say I'm wrong. Prove me wrong. Prove me that Christ came for another nation besides Israel.
Prove me that Christ preached the gospel to every nation on the earth besides Israel. Prove to me that. You can go get your pastor. You can go get your minister. You can go get your evangelist. You can go get your missionary. You can go get your deacon. Prove to me that Christ preached the gospel to every nation on this earth. He didn't do that. So who is the gospel only for? The gospel is only for the Israelites. Who are the Israelites today? Black people, Hispanic people, and Native American people. They are the Israelites. This is why the white man gave you these false titles. This is why the white man would tell the Jews that they niggers. This is why the white man would tell the Jews that they so-called black or colored people because he wanted to try to get them new titles. He wanted to he wanted to try to apply to us new titles so we can forget our biblical title. Our biblical title is Judah. But the white man came along and tried to give us other titles to isolate us from our biblical title. So now you won't even know you're a Jew because the white man don't told you that you're a nigger or a colored person or a black person or a so-called African-American. Ain't no such thing as no damn African-American. Jesse Jackson came up with that in the 1980s. The white man paid Jesse Jackson off to apply to you African-American. That's where you get African-American from. In the 1980s, Jesse Jackson made that up. Ain't no such thing as no damn African-American. You can't be part of two continents. African-American, that's two continents. That's not even describing a nation. So ask yourself, so-called black man, truly, who are you? You are the Israelites that the Bible speaks about. You see, that's why the, that's why the Spaniards came along and wanted to isolate. The, see, the tribe of Issachar, who you call the so-called Mexicans, the so-called Mexicans, because they, we know that they are, we know that they are the Issacharites. That's why the white man came along, started calling them Hispanics and Latinos, because he wanted to isolate them from their biblical tribal national name Issachar. You see all these proverbs and bywords, all these false titles that was given to you by the oppressor. He made sure he he made sure he wanted to cut you off from your heritage. He couldn't afford for your biblical tribal name to remain. He couldn't afford for your biblical tribal name to remain. So you know what? We can't let the so-called black people in America, we can't let them know that they are the Jews. We got to call them colored niggas, African-Americans and so forth. We got to call them everything than what the Bible called them. We can't let them know they are the Jews. And that's why you have been led to believe you are these false titles today. You see, because the white man knows salvation and deliverance is not for him. He also knows the gospel is not for him. That's why he went into the Bible and whitewashed the whole entire Bible. That's why he whitewashed all the iconic biblical characters of the Bible. Told you that Jesus Christ was white. Told you that Moses was white. Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The 12 disciples. You know, the 12 major prophets. The 12 minor prophets. He told you everybody in this Bible was pale-skinned. Because he wanted to cut you off from your heritage and your history. So he took your history and flipped it around and made it seem like it was his history. That's why they call it his story. But you got to look behind the lies, man. You got to look behind the lies. The Bible is not the white man's book because the Bible actually condemns the white man. The Bible tells you that the white man is going in slavery for a thousand years. The Bible tells you that the white man will be cut off for the violence against Jacob. You see? But if he can get you to believe that the Bible is his book, he got you. You see? The gospel is not for the white man, the white woman, or his children. You see? And the gospel is not for any other heathen nation that are not Israelites. In order for the gospel to be appointed to you, you got to be an Israelite, man. Prove me wrong. Anybody. You see? So, guys, the gospel is only for the Israelites. The gospel is only for the Israelites. The gospel is only for the Israelites. Now, did the gospel start with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when you go into the New Testament? Because, you know, the church would tell you that this is why you got to be very careful, man. You got to study to show yourselves approved. You can't listen to everybody around you. 
You got to study for yourselves because the church would tell you the gospels begin with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Do you actually believe that the gospels begins with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? No. However, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they are the four gospels, but the gospel did not begin with Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke and, Luke, and John. In other words, the gospel did not begin in the New Testament. The whole entire Bible is the gospel, y'all. The gospel did not begin in the New Testament. Because a lot of believe that the gospel began in the New Testament. The gospel begins with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but that's not true. The gospel actually began there in the book of Genesis. So the whole entire Bible is the gospel because the gospel means good news or what you would say glad tidings of salvation because the whole entire Bible speaks about salvation for the Israelites. So the whole entire Bible is the gospel, not just Matt, Mark, not just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The whole entire Bible is the gospel, man. You see? So guys, um... Yeah, the gospel is only for Israel. Let, let me show you something. Matthew 4 and 23. Let's go to Matthew 4 and 23. Matthew, the fourth chapter, the 23rd verse. Let's, let's check that out. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. Watch this. Matthew 4 and 23. It says, Matthew 4 and 23. I don't like to call him Jesus, but. For those of you that don't know, I will call him Jesus. I will read it verbatim. I don't like to call him Jesus because the Messiah name is not Jesus. J is the newest letter in the alphabet. The letter J, the letter J came on the scene during the 1700s. You see. So I don't like to call him Jesus. His real name is Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. But for those that don't know that, I will, I will read it verbatim. I will say Jesus. For those that don't know that. So this is Matthew 4 and 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Teaching in their synagogues. And preaching the gospel. Of the kingdom. And healing all manner of sicknesses. And all manner of disease. Among the people. Now. Let's, let's scrutinize that. Let's analyze that. This is Matthew 4 and 23. It says. And Jesus went. About all Galilee teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases among the people. Now notice what Matthew chapter 4 and 23 says. It says that Jesus, he went out preaching the gospel. He went out healing. He went out curing sicknesses of people. He went out. Curing diseases among the people. Notice what it says. It said the people. Matthew 4 and 23 says. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. Heal sicknesses and manner of diseases among the people. It says among the people. Now who are those people? Who are those people? Those people are the Israelites. See the scholars couldn't afford to put Israelite in the Bible. See it really said among the Israelites. The scholars changed that and put the people to keep you from knowing who the Messiah sent out to. To keep you, to keep you from knowing who the Messiah preached the gospel to, who the Messiah healed, who the Messiah cured. Matthew 4 and 23. Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. It said that Jesus healed the people. You see, they put the people there. It should have been Jesus healed the Israelites, but they, they, they couldn't afford to let you know that. You see. So when Jesus Christ went out preaching the gospel, he didn't preach the gospel to all nations of people. When Jesus Christ went out preaching the gospel, he didn't preach the gospel to no other nation but his nation. Jesus Christ only preached the gospel to his people. In other words, he didn't preach the gospel to the white man. He didn't preach the gospel to the Chinese, the Japanese, the East Indians, the Arabs and the Africans. He only preached the gospel to his people, which are the Hebrew Israelites. Who are the Hebrew Israelites today? Blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. You are the chosen people. 
You are the Hebrew Israelites. And Christ 2,000 years ago, he only preached the gospel to you. He only healed the sicknesses of our people. He only cured the diseases of our people. He didn't go around just healing any other nation on the earth. Jamar Jackson says, the Catholic Church is hiding the truth. Exactly, my brother. So I don't know why when you go to church, I don't know why they tell you in the church, oh, Jesus Christ, he just went around healing everybody. He went around preaching the gospel to everybody. He went around healing all manner of sicknesses among everybody and all type of diseases. He went throughout the whole earth just healing, teaching the gospel to everybody. That's not true. That's not true. If a pastor is preaching that, he's a false prophet. If a minister is teaching that, that's a false minister. That's a wolf in sheep clothing. He did not do that. Jesus Christ did not preach the gospel to all nations. He did not heal all nations. He did not teach all nations. He only taught his people. And if you see a problem with that, please give me a book, chapter, and verse to back your claim up. Because I got plenty of book, chapter, and verses that's waiting for you. If, if you want to say that I'm wrong, if you want to say that Jesus taught everybody on the face of this earth, give me a book, chapter, and verse for that, and I'll prove you wrong instantly. You see? Because I know what the hell I'm talking about. This is why in Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, it says, I'm going to read it over again. This is why it says in Matthew 4 and 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee. He went about all Galilee. Who are the Galileans? Them Hebrews. He went throughout all Galilee, teaching in the synagogue. Come on, man. Who the only people that is found in synagogues? The Jews. Teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases among the people. That's why the scholars write. That's why the scholars put the people. Because they don't want you to know who he healed. They don't want you to know who he was preaching the gospel to. So they went and put the people there. It really supposed to be the Israelites there. Because the Israelites are the people. So what if, what if the church tell you that's not true? What if the church say, no, we don't believe that. We believe that Jesus went preaching the gospel in the kingdom of heaven to all. What if the church say, we don't believe this brother. We believe that Jesus came preaching the gospel in the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven to come to all. Well, guess what? Whoever saying that, they are a lot. That's a damn lie. And I'm going to show you this. Watch this. Now, did not Jesus preach about the kingdom of heaven? Right? Prince Shaheed. Did not Jesus preach about the kingdom of heaven? Aretha McDuffie. Aretha McDuffie. Did not Jesus preach about the kingdom of heaven? Jamar Jackson. Did not Jesus Preach about the kingdom of heaven. Patricia Toombs. Did not Jesus preach about the kingdom of heaven? Who else? Maurice Hodge. Did not Jesus preach about the kingdom of heaven? So if Jesus preached about the kingdom of heaven, who did he preach about the kingdom of heaven to? Did he go throughout all nations preaching about the kingdom of heaven? Let's see who he preached about the kingdom of heaven to. Let's go to the book of Acts. So let's go to the book of Acts in the New Testament and let's begin with Acts chapter 1 and let's look at verse 6. This is Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Watch this. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. And this is for the Christian leaders. This is for the Christian pastors. This is for anybody that say that Jesus Christ went preaching the kingdom of heaven to everybody. I'm going to prove that wrong right now. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Let's see who the kingdom of heaven is for. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When they therefore were come together. This is talking about the 12 disciples. Acts 1 and 6. When they therefore were come together. They asked of him. This is the 12 disciples asking Christ. Yahweh Shai who they call Jesus. They asked of him saying. Lord. Will thou at this time 
restore again the kingdom to Israel. This is in Acts chapter 1 verse 6. The 12 disciples, which was Hebrew Israelites, they asked the Messiah. They asked Christ. Will you at this time, will you restore again the kingdom to Israel? So who are the kingdom of heaven for? Who is the kingdom of heaven for? The kingdom of heaven is for Israel. So who is the gospel for? Because it tells you that Jesus Christ went preaching the gospel of the kingdom. So if Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom, guess who he was preaching the gospel to? He was preaching the gospel only to the nation of Israel. No one else. He wasn't preaching no gospel to no damn Romans. No Greeks and Italians. He was preaching the gospels to the Galileans. He was preaching the gospels to the Hebrews. He was preaching the gospel to his people. So was Jesus Christ a racist? You damn right he was. Was Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, was he a racist? Absolutely he was a racist. Because he only cared for those among his nation. He only cared for his brothers and sisters, his family and friends. He only cared for his people. Jesus Christ was sent only to his nation. No other nation on this earth. You see? If you was not an Israelite, you was not getting healed by Jesus. If you was not an Israelite, you was not getting taught the gospel by Jesus. If you was not an Israelite, you was not being cured of your sickness and the, your sicknesses and diseases. You had to be an Israelite to be delivered and healed by Jesus Christ. If you was not an Israelite, you was not getting healed. You was not getting the gospel preached to you. Now the churches ain't going to tell you that, are they? Your churches ain't going to tell you that. Your church is going to make it seem like Jesus Christ was for all nations. He was going around doing this for all people. But see, messing around with me, you're going to receive the truth. Messing around with me, I'm going to open your eyes to the truth. Okay? And for any one of you Bible scholars out there, prove me wrong on what I'm saying. Prove me wrong that Jesus Christ went to everybody teaching and preaching the gospel. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When they therefore was come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? The kingdom of heaven is only for the Israelites. The kingdom of heaven is only for the Israelites. So when we go back to Matthew 4 Verse 23, when we go back to Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, and it said the Messiah came preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Guess who he was teaching it to? Only the Israelites. Yeah, that's right. How else do we know that? How else do we know that? Go to Matthew 1 and 21. Let's go to Matthew 1 and 21. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. It says, and she shall bring forth a son. Who was that she? It's talking about Mary, which was the mother of Christ. Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai. Not Jesus. The scholars put Jesus in the Bible. We know that there are no J's in the Hebrew. There are no J letter or sound in the Hebrew language, in the Hebrew alphabet. There are no J letter or sound in the Greek alphabet. Or the Greek language. There are no J letter sound in the Latin language. There are no there are, there are J's in the Spanish in the Spanish language, but the, but it's not pronounced as J's in the Spanish language. So really, the the J is the newest letter on the earth. So in Matthew one and twenty one, when it says she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, it said Yahweh Shai, which means he delivers. Thou shalt call his name Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, which means he delivers. Yahweh Shai means he delivers or Yahweh is salvation. That's what it means. But they put Jesus in the Bible. The white man put Jesus in the Bible to throw you off. It's all good. We're going to read it verbatim. That shall call his name Jesus. This is this is Matthew 1 and 21. That shall call his name Jesus for he shall save everybody. Look at Matthew 1 and 21 and you tell me. Look at Matthew 1 and 21 and you tell me. It says... She shall, Mary shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. I'm going to read it like it is. 
that shall call his name Jesus, for he shall do what? For he shall save his people. That's possessive. Not everybody. Not all nations. For he shall save his people. Who are the people of Christ? Who are the people of the Messiah? Yeah, the Israelites. The blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. You are the people of Christ. You are the people that Christ was sent to. The people that you see on this sign right here. The American Negroes. The West Indian Jamaicans. The Haitians. The Dominicans. The Panamanians. The Guatemalans. The Puerto Ricans. The Cubans. The Seminole Indians. The North American Indians. The Brazilians. The Colombians. The Uraeans. The Argentinians. The Chileans. And the Mexicans. Basically all these people. Which are blacks, Hispanics, Latinos, and Native Americans. You make up the whole house of Israel. You make up all the 12 tribes. And Christ was sent directly to you. If you're not on this 12 tribe chart. You can kick rocks because Christ wasn't sent to preach the gospel to you. He wasn't sent to heal you. He wasn't sent to bring you deliverance. In other words, see, if you look over here, these are the people that Christ was not sent to. So Christ didn't preach the gospel to these people. Christ didn't preach the gospel to the Edomites, which are the white man. Christ didn't preach the gospel to the East Indians. And go all the way down. If you, if you want to pause the video to write this down, if you want to pause the video, write these nations down. All these nations that you see here. They did not have the gospel preached to them. They did not. They did not have deliverance and salvation preached to them. You know why? Because they was not Israelites. So, in other words, you want the gospel. You want deliverance. You want salvation. You want healing. You gotta be an Israelite. You gotta be black. You gotta be a Negro to ending in the sin. And if you're not, tough luck. You're going in slavery when Christ returns. All you heathens that are not Israelites, you're going in slavery when Christ returns because you have to pay for subduing us. You have to pay for subjugating us. You have to pay for colonizing us. The same thing you did to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you heathen nations, the same thing you did to blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans in terms of raping and robbing and murdering us, in terms of servitude and making us slaves, same thing going to happen to y'all heathens when Christ returns. Y'all going into slavery. Y'all going in chains. You see? So that's why it's so special to be an Israelite. Because if you're an Israelite, then you have hope in terms of salvation. You have hope in deliverance. All you got to do is keep the law, statutes, and commandments. All you got to do is follow the instructions of this Bible. And the kingdom of heaven is for you. But you got to be an Israelite. You see? So I just wanted to state my claim. I just wanted to point that out. Christ was not going around just preaching the gospel of the kingdom of heaven to all people. He wasn't doing that. You see? So, Jamar Jackson, man, you know, who else? Aretha McDuffie, Prince, Prince Shaheed, Patricia Toombs, uh, Maurice Hodge, Paris Valentino, and many more that's tuned in. Yeah, man. Yahweh Shah, who they call Jesus Christ. He was a so-called black man with woolly hair and bronze skin. You know, he was a so-called... Jesus Christ was a so-called nigger. In other words, he was from the tribe of Judah. And he only went around preaching the gospel to his people. That's why them, that's why them Romans didn't like him. That's why, them, that's why them white Romans didn't like him. You see, because he didn't stand for their nation. He stood for his own nation. And that's why the Roman Empire hated Jesus. That's why the Roman Empire hated him. Because he wasn't he wasn't preaching. He wasn't bringing glad tidings of salvation to them. You see. A lot of people will say. I mean, if you guys have any questions before I close out. If you just skeptical, you don't know what to believe, you just in between, and you don't believe what I'm saying true, I mean, just text me a question, man. You can Before I close out, you can just go ahead and key that in in the inscription box, in the description box. Just text me a question, and I'll be, I'll be happy to get to you, man. I'll be more than happy to, to assist you and help you. You see, just, just ask me a question, you know what I'm saying? If you don't think, if you don't think that Jesus Christ... Was only sent to the Israelites. Just you know, just get at me, you know. But it's irrefutable evidence that he was only sent to the Israelites. 
So I showed you what the gospel was, guys. You know, and uh, the gospel is only for the Israelites. I mean, I don't pretty much have nothing else to say concerning this lesson. I'm about to close out. So um, thank you guys for your time. But yeah, I mean, I don't know where they get this from, man. They say uh, Jesus Christ was preaching the gospel to everybody. John the Baptist wasn't even baptizing everybody. How in the hell did Jesus Christ, wait a minute, man. How in the hell Jesus Christ was preaching the gospel to everybody and John the Baptist wasn't even baptizing everybody? Do you not know that? You know John the Baptist? That was Jesus' cousin. That was who we call, the Hebrews, we call him Yahweh Shai. The world called him Jesus Christ. But John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. Now, did John the Baptist just go and baptize all nations? Was John the Baptist dipping every nation in the water? Let me tell you something. If you was not an Israelite, you wasn't being baptized by John. In order for John the Baptizer to baptize you, you had to be an Israelite. So was John the Baptizer racist? Yeah, he was racist. There's nothing wrong with being racist. Racism is just when you stand for your, your nation of people. Racism is just when you help. You are willing to support and stand for your race. That's what racism means. So John the Baptist, he was racist. Jesus Christ, he was racist. All the Hebrew Israelites of the Bible was racist because they only looked out for their nation of people and they only taught deliverance in terms of salvation to their people. John the Baptist only baptized his people. John the Baptist only preached to his people. John the Baptist only baptize his people I know what you're saying show me that in the Bible you want to see it do you want to see it let me show you in the Bible that John the Baptist only baptized his people he wasn't just dipping any and everybody in the water he wasn't dipping any and everybody under the water if you was not an Israelite and you came to get baptized by John the Baptist and if you was not an Israelite John the Baptist turned you around and sent you on your way. You don't believe me? Watch this. Let's go into um, Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. Matthew 3, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to close out. Matthew 3 and verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist, which was the cousin of, of Jesus Christ. Yahweh. This is Matthew 3 and 1. In those days came John the Baptist, Preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Judea is the Greek word for Judah. Let me show you guys. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. This is Matthew 3 and 1. Matthew chapter 3 verse 1. When you see Judea. When you see Judea. J-U-D. E J U D A E A Judea Judea is the same as Judah. So let let me let me show you guys right here. Judea is the same as Judah. Judea is the same as Judah. The only difference is if you want to say this right here, if you want to say Judah, and see Judah, if you want to say Judah in the Grecian language, you will have to say Judea. It's the same thing. So in Matthew 3 and 1, in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judah, a.k.a. Judea. Now, who reside in Judea? The Jews. Who was the inhabitants of Judea, Judah? The Jews, Israelites. Matthew 3, verse 2. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So when John... So when John was telling the people to repent, who was he talking to? Was he talking to all nations? Everybody, everybody from the north, south, east, and west, everybody repent. Was he telling all nations repent? Hell no. Hell no, he wasn't. He was only talking to the Israelites. He was only talking to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He was only talking to the Israelites. He says, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does it mean to repent? To repent means to change the mind for the better. Repentance means change, changing the mind. 
When you repent, you change the mind for the better and never go back to what you was doing wickedly. That's what it means to repent. To repent means to change the mind for the better. You see, so when John was telling them, them tell, telling them people to get their get your mind right, in other words, repent. Repent means you get your mind right for the better. When John said repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he was only telling the Israelites to do that. He wasn't talking to no Greeks. He wasn't talking to no Romans. He wasn't talking to no Italians. He wasn't talking to no Asians. You see, he wasn't talking to no Africans. No Arabs, no East Indians, no Syrians. He wasn't talking to them. He was talking to the Israelites. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Because the Israelites are the only one that can repent. So repentance is only for the Israelites. If you're not an Israelite, you can't repent. Because repentance is only for the Israelites. Matthew 3, verse 3. Now, I'm going to stop with that. So we just read Matthew 3 and 2, and we can see that John was telling the people to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, when it goes on down, we're going to look at Matthew 3, verse 5. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around about Jordan. This is Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, verse 5. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all of Judea, see, that's talking about all the Jews and all the region around about Jordan. Matthew chapter three, verse six, and were baptized of him and the Jordan confessing their sins. So when John the Baptist was baptizing these people in the Jordan River, all those people was Israelites that he was dipping under the water. When John the Baptist was baptizing the people in the Jordan River, he just wasn't baptizing anybody. See, the Christian church do that. See, because the Christian church don't know about the Bible. The Christian church, they willing to dip anybody in the shit. They'll baptize anybody. The Christian church don't know what the hell they got going on because they don't know the scriptures. They don't know the Bible. They just been taught. They've been taught the Bible traditionally. They don't know the see the spirit of God hasn't really dealt with them like that. They don't know the Bible. They just teach tradition. They just teach what they've been taught through philosophy. They don't know the scriptures. I'm showing you facts. When John the Baptist was baptizing those people in the Jordan River, they was only Israelites. But guess what they do in the Christian church? They baptize every damn body. Even John the Baptist had better sense than that to only baptize his people. Now, if you if you doubt me and say the Bible never said that John the Baptist baptized only his people. Oh, it didn't? Well, let's go into the book of Acts. And this is the last book, this is the last book chapter and verse I'm going to give you. So John the Baptist didn't baptize only his people, huh? Let's go into the book of Acts. We're going to deal with that quick. Acts 13, 24. Let's deal with that. We're going to deal with that quick. We'll deal with that quick, buddy. Acts 13, 24 in the New Testament. Let's see who the people John the Baptist baptized in the Jordan River. This is the book of Acts 13, verse 24. It says, when John had first preached, this is Acts, the book of Acts, 13 verse 24 when John had first preached before his coming the baptism of the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel Acts 13 24 and when John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel John the Baptist only baptized Israelites in the Jordan River no other nation so if you was not an Israelite, guess what? You was not getting baptized. You was not being preached the gospel to. So who is the gospel for? Only the Israelites, man. Who is the Bible for? Only the Israelites. Who is salvation for? Only the Israelites. Who is deliverance for? Only the Israelites. Who did Christ die for? Only the Israelites. Who was Moses sent to? To deliver them. Who was Moses? Way back in the day. Who was Moses sent to? To deliver them from Egypt. Only the Israelites. You see, who would God redeem again? And who would God, who would God liberate from the hands of the white man in America? Because when Christ make his second return, who would God deliver then? Only the Israelites. The whole Bible is for the Israelites. If you're not an Israelite, give your Bible away. You got to be black. 
Negro or Hispanic descent to be an Israelite. If you're not an Israelite, give your Bible away to a, to an Israelite brother or sister, cause salvation not for you. To next lesson, we thank you guys for tuning in. Jamar Jackson, um, Aretha McDuffie, Prant Shahid, Patricia Toomes, uh, who else? Maurice Hodge, Paris Valentino. Um, we thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we know that it's it's pretty late. You know, it's around 10, going on 11 o'clock. Uh, we just, I thank you guys um, for being part of this wonderful lesson. Man, just be sure to share the video with family and friends. And let's try to get as many brothers and sisters out of these Christian out of these Christian churches, man. And wake them up to the truth and let them know that they are Israelite. Because the, Christ, the Christian church, you know what I'm saying, has done a bad job, man, in edifying our people spiritually. And so let's do that. If we don't do anything else, let's help. Wake up our brothers and sisters and pull them from among that religion they in. Until next time, peace and much love to you all. Shalom.